All right, guys, today we are talking about the TSR Halligan Bar and the TSR Fire Mall. Uh, together, they make the Tactical Striking Ram package. This video is actually for all of our training partners. These tools in particular are our prototypes. They're going to be sent out to all of you guys to test out, try out, and give us feedback. Our job here at Fire Mall is to build the most purpose-driven tools possible. Uh, it's been a passion of mine and I continue to push uh, really the envelope and getting the best tools out there. I'm tired of the fire service being victims of having tools that we just adopt or that are just subpar. Let's build tools that are made for our job and have the best design possible. So this video is for everybody testing it out. Um, Again, what we really want to look out look at is not only the features that are in it now, but uh, possibly maybe some improvements that could be made. We all know halogen bars have already been done, right? And we all know they're effective. But I think there's a lot of little things that we can change to make that tool a little bit better. And these are from tried and true practices, enforceable entry uh, that can make our job just a little bit easier and a little more effective. So. I want to thank everybody. Again, we're going to start discussing the features of this tool and the design that went into it and possibly how we can make it better and things we want you all to test out. So uh, again, let's get started. I'm actually going to start off with the TSR Fire Mall. Not everybody's going to be getting uh, one of these. We have a limited number. Uh, just over eight pounds. Uh, it does not have our collar shield in there. We are testing out this Nupla handle. As of right now, uh, the weight uh, will probably come in hopefully just over nine pounds once we add our collar shield system. Alternatively, there's a possibility we'll just stick with the Nupla uh, tool and we won't have our, ha our overstrike protection in there. So that's something we'll have to see. It all comes down to cost and everything. But so right now it's just over, I think eight and a half pounds, 8.7. Uh, the final production version We'll end up being right around nine pounds, maybe a little bit more. So again, it's gonna be a heavy irons tool, you know, made for forcible entry, made for serving as a, a weight in that, driving that halogen bar or doing that tactical ram. Uh, some of the features of this tool, again, flat top, the blade itself. One of the things we were gonna want you guys to focus on is using that blade like a wedge. It is wedge shaped like a force, uh, force wedge, the sides, are 90 degrees, they don't taper down until uh, I'd say about an inch. So it forms about a one inch wedge that are, is perfectly in line with each other. I have some notches on here. Those notches are made if I am driving it, uh, hopefully they catch, hopefully they keep from bouncing out or anything like that, but just to catch that door and that jam a little bit. The notch itself can always be married to our Halloween bars. Uh, the one a Halligan bar you'll find is the original Pro Bar. It gets a bit of a shallow marry in there. You can marry it to it. It's just a little bit shallower, not as deep as your Max Rex or the TSR in particular. But you can marry, and we want you guys to do that topside marry all the time. Your typical blade, if you are bashing with it, it still works just like a fire mill. Doesn't get stuck. That blade system doesn't get stuck. Again, these uh, tools in particular, this is an S7. S7 tool steel. We will be looking to do an S5. Right now it is cast, it's a prototype cast. Uh, so you do need to watch uh, the edges uh, as these things get used. They're not, again, they're not a production version. They are a prototype. So you might get some dings on this. Uh, it's not the final version that we're gonna have. It is heat treated to right now 50 to 52 on a Rockwell hardness scale. Uh, this one in particular has been getting used and already we got a little bit of a, a ding over here on those sharp corners. We might round those corners off a little bit more. Still have a nice clean face on it, but just to avoid that chipping. But mostly, I think we need to talk about the TSR Halligan. These are made out of an S7 tool steel. They're still prototypes. Our production version, we're gonna look for using the S5 tool steel. Again, a more premium tool steel or a premium type of steel over your typical uh, pro bar or something like that. That's usually a 4140. This is an actual tool steel. We'll be looking to use that S5. That's that shock loading uh, tool steel that we use on right now on our maulers and reapers. The performance of those has, has been just awesome. 
So the tool itself, 26 inch halogen bar. We did that because uh, we wanted that compactness of a small, you know, compact tool that marries to our TSR fire mall, forming that battering ram. But also, again, as an officer tool, a nice small compact tool, it can still do a lot of work. Uh, also, typical tools out there on the market right now, whether it be, you know, uh, an Iron Fox Axe or a Lock Slot 8, uh, I believe in even the Firefighter Axe Inc., the way it marries uh, to a 30 inch halogen bar usually requires you to have a 36 inch handle. Your standard 32 inch handle does not come above the ads of a standard 30 inch halogen bar. So if you were to buy this tool individually, you could now run an iron set with your standard 32 inch handle on those tools. Our tools in particular, our handle sizes and the demolish handle coming out actually has a little bit longer length below the tool. It's about 30 inches below the tool, so it alleviates that issue. But that is also another reason why we went with that 26 inches. As we talk to our production team uh, that is going to be making these tools, we do have the capability of tooling for a 30 inch bar. You might see one down the road. We'll pay for the tooling now, and if production requires or demand requires, we could put out a 30 inch bar. But right now we are focusing on that 26 inch halogen bar because of its ability to always marry to the top side of our tools and you know, uh, extend your leverage to really 40 inches. Now, right off the bat, you're gonna see large striking face. So one of the things and one of the concepts I wanted to put into this halogen bar as either an officer tool or made for forcible entry, um, again, you'll see our blade is wedge shape. So we wanted to have something to be able to strike and drive that wedge. So we have a nice large striking face. Not only does that allow you to give you something to hit, you can also strike with it, but also it's gonna give you a lot of driving power with that spike or with that adds. Let's say we're just doing some overhaul, we wanna drive that ad, swing it into something, peel it out. It gives you driving force. And a baseball swing into a jam, again, driving force on that spike with that head up there. Uh, the tool itself is coming in right about 10 pounds. You will feel a little bit more of the weight in the head. The spike itself, when I talk about doing a baseball swing or spike into a jam, the spike is down away from the top side of the head. So that means I gotta angle my swing in just a little bit, but there's still plenty of room to catch that jam and do a baseball swing into a door. Uh, the spike itself, is uh, octagonal or it has edges on it as opposed to being rounded. So what that allows us to do is after we spike that jam, that tool is more likely to splinter that jam. I have an, you know, a hexagonal or whatever shape into that jam as opposed to rounded. So when I turn that, those edges are gonna catch and open up that jam, splintering that jam, accomplishing what we want to accomplish. That is why that is like that. Now I talk about the spike being down away from the top of the ads. That is done also for a reason. So that way when I am rolling my ads, I don't have to always teach now, we always teach going away from the spike. Now we can actually drive down and towards that spike, especially if I'm on the lower portion of a door and I can't get underneath my tool to go up with it, I can now go down and get a majority of my force out of my tool in either direction top side or the ads. One of the things we need to talk about is the width of the ads. We have a two inch ads here and I say true two inch and I did that because this ads is two inches all the way back and actually it's going to be two inches all the way back to the full surface of the ads. Originally we did a forward facing ads that is two inches thick back to the first uh, your first door mark. Uh, and then we had to fill in some surface area and make a larger strike area up here in order to, it kind of helped give you contact service on that ads on the back. So actually what we're gonna end up doing is uh, actually filling this all the way in. This tool will be two inches all the way back. But what that allows us to have is a full two inch contact surface or full uh, contact surface against the door if you're rolling that ads so like on an inward swinging door. Most tools uh, or most ads are two inches at the tip and then they taper back. 
So that means your contact surface is really just pointed, pointed at the tips. In this case, I want as much contact surface against that door as possible. So that's why we do a full two inches. That way you're pushing that door completely in. The edge itself. It does uh, bevel downward slightly. Um, you'll see this bevel here in the bottom. The top is actually 90 degrees. So this first inch and three quarter is 90 degrees to the halogen bar. That is done for when I drive that tool into an outward swinging door. It is a straight shot. I just shoot it straight in and then it's not going to start to bevel or turn until I tell it to. So that does two things for me. A, it's easy going in, and then it also allows my forks here on the end to be open. There, it alleviates any sort of pinch point between the forks and the door. So it leaves this wide open so I can either grab and then begin to direct that adds behind the door as I need it, or behind the jam to slip past the jam as needed. It also allows you to leave this nice and open so I can easily marry that tool uh, and extend my leverage. I'm gonna go ahead and tell everybody to just do that all the time. I mean, it is your maximum leverage. It allows you to uh, get the most force out of your tool. Uh, you can mess around with doing it without it, but I say, why not? Uh, so that's, that's the features of the ads. Um, again, you're running down to the uh, actual bar you have your grip area and then you're gonna have uh, outside the shoulders this little landing ramp kind of like a landing ramp for the shoulders and we did that because it's nice and flat we put two flat surfaces on either side of the bar above each shoulder so that allows you if you had a limited strike space and you needed to do a shoulder strike I have a nice landing ramp I can lay that tool on and just follow it all the way down to do a shoulder strike Again, our shoulders are squared. Uh, they do not need to be tuned. They are squared. That's some of the features of having a one-piece cast uh, tool steel. It, it gets you all those tight features we want. The forks themselves, again, standard width on these forks. Uh, they do not need to be modified. They are wide enough to do pull knobs, uh, those sorts of things. Um, you'll see on here that the, it is, you know, six inches, but also you'll see this inside fork ring. So the tools themselves uh, have different sized fork ramps. One of them is pretty exaggerated. Most of you will be getting either an exaggerated one or a medium uh, size one. And what this is, this is an inside fork ramp that does not engage until after I've cleared my door, right? Your first hash mark is your door after you've cleared your jam, then that ramp starts to engage. And at that point, you really are doing nothing but driving a wedge. So we want to get a little bit more contact surface against that door, pushing that, that door out and further away from the, the lock set. So uh, again, what you'll find is it does two things. Not only pushes the door out a little bit, it also keeps you from overdriving. Uh, in particular, the ones with the really thick one, you are probably never going to be able to drive it all the way up to our little, our little speed bump here you'll feel that that thing is really starting to wedge itself in there um, probably just before it gets to the crotch so you'll be able to force your door then again it's a good indicator that i've driven my tool all the way as far as i need to now i'm going to get max leverage to finish driving that door and finish forcing your door so that is mostly the features of the tool again it is uh, going to be shooting for an s5 you'll find these things they might get a little bit more beat up they are a prototype they're not a production model they are an s7 but again, they're a prototype cast, so they're not going to be as sturdy as a production model. But let's get these tools in your hands. Um, I am looking forward to hearing back from all of you. If you are getting this tool, it means you are a trusted partner, you are an expert in the field, and we want your feedback. Again, we all love a standard Halgen bar. It's done its job, but we can make it better. And that is from tried and true practices and maybe some new concepts we'll be able to implement. But our job here, again, is to make the best possible tool for the fire service. So again, I thank everybody for the time. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. It will be cut in with some of the features I'm talking about. And I look forward to everybody trying this tool out. Uh, we will need your help bringing this thing to market. Take advantage of the pre-orders now. It is the lowest cost you'll see on these tools. These tools, 
you know, they, they might be expensive to make, but it'll be worth it because of all the added features we have. So uh, if you're looking to order one, I would order it now. So again, thank you everybody for your time and stay safe out there.